Welcome to Faith Comes By Hearing's January Update, honoring those who will at last have the opportunity to hear God's Word in their heart language. Because of your work, because of your commitment, and because of your passion, more lives are transformed to the glory of Christ. Each audio scripture created and released for access represents thousands upon thousands of people worldwide. We are counting down to 2033 with a release of new languages and ultimately to the time when every person on earth can hear Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Welcome to The Update. Welcome to the first edition of The Update in 2024. My name is Aaron Murphy. I'm the Digital Coordinator for Marketing Communications. And I'm Lori Koch, Language Recording Director. Now, this year is a very special year, especially for our language updates, because this year, Faith Comes by Hearing is going to reach 2,000 languages recorded. Yes, we are, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, this month, though, we're releasing another language from Papua, Indonesia. Do you know where that is, Aaron? Of course I do, Lori. But, you know, for everyone listening, we want to make sure we're all on the same page. Right. Well, Papua, Indonesia is part of the island of New Guinea, which is located just north of Australia. And hundreds of years ago, European colonizers divided it right down the middle so that pre the, the east side of the island is present-day Papua New Guinea, an independent nation, and the west side of the island is known as Papua Indonesia, and it's part of the nation of Indonesia. But the island as a whole represents really unique challenges for us, partly because of its linguistic diversity. The island contains about a thousand different spoken languages. That's quite a few. Yes, it is. And not only that, the people groups are really remote. The, the terrain is really rugged. And that's why I'm excited about releasing a language from there. And I, I've got a great story that goes back in history to um, what was going on with missionaries and Bible translation uh, two generations ago in Papua Indonesia. Well, I know I'm excited to hear that. But before we get to that, we need to hear our first set of languages. Okay. Abatwa Tembo. Ali. Alogola Bokar. Isisimu Yesu da agung pamnya ginki asihera gengle aguze hel asihera. Wasn't it wonderful to hear those languages and know that those people groups now have God's word in audio? It's always music to my ears. But Laurie, you had a story to finish telling us, right? Yes, I do. So, Aaron, a lot of Americans are familiar with the story of five missionaries who were speared to death by the Warani tribesmen of Ecuador in 1956. Yeah, there was a, a movie that came out several years ago about it, correct? Yeah. That, what's the name of that movie? Uh, End of the Spear. Right, The End of the Spear. And part of that story is that the widow of one of those missionaries later went back to evangelize the tribe, Elizabeth Elliot. Right. So fewer Americans are aware of the story of two other missionaries, an Australian by the name of Stan Dale and an American, Phil Masters, who were also killed by a tribe of cannibalistic headhunters in 1968 on the island of New Guinea. Yeah, I have not heard of that story. So yeah, at this, at this time um, in New Guinea, there was a tribe called the Dani who had been largely evangelized and there were a lot of believers and churches were being planted. So Stan and his team were starting to make inroads into the neighboring Yali tribe. But the further and further they went into Yali territory, the more violent the resistance became. 
Okay. And so one time when Stan and Phil were planning to go even deeper into Yali territory, there were some 400 Donnie tribes people that gathered on the riverbank that day, and they were just weeping out of fear for the lives of these two men that they loved because they understood how treacherous and dangerous the Yali could be. And I'm assuming that that didn't stop these guys. No, it didn't. Uh, Phil was quoted as saying, dry your tears because the Donny have the gospel of Jesus and the Yali do not. That's, that's quite the statement to say when you're facing certain danger. Well, and they did face certain danger because later on the two men were ambushed and each one was pierced with a hundred arrows and then they were beheaded and their bodies were cut into pieces and for many years... Um, it was believed that they had been cannibalized, and each man left behind a wife and five children. I, I can't even imagine. I know. It's, it's a tragic story. Um, but the, the Yali were sure after all of that that they wouldn't hear from the white men again. But just three months later, another missionary family, the Newmans, were being flown into a mission station in that general area. But sadly, their, their small plane crashed into the mountainside. And the sole survivor of that crash was their nine-year-old son, Paul. That's a lot of, that's a lot of tragedy, Lori. Yeah. But that's not the end of the story because God continued to work in that situation. Well, I'm definitely ready to hear the rest of that. But God is also working all over. And uh, that includes with the next set of languages we're going to be listening to. Gim. Those are languages that represent people who no longer have to wait for God's word and audio. And I no longer want to wait in suspense to hear the end of this story. Okay, so the plane crashes and the sole survivor is this nine-year-old boy. So he crawls out of the wreckage and he makes his way to the hut of a Yali elder by the name of Kusaho. Now, Kusaho was one of the ones who was actually opposed to the killing of Stan and Phil. And so he protected the boy until a rescue party could arrive. What a divine appointment. Well, it was because the rescue of this boy would mark the turning point for the Yali. So their hearts were softened. Um, they slowly started to tolerate and then actually welcome missionaries to come among them. And among the missionaries was Phil's widow and children. Phyllis Masters would remain in Papua, Indonesia for the next 30 years, um, ministering to the people in this area. And even some of Stan and Phil's killers became followers of Christ, and they repented for their actions on the riverbank that day. And they were also able to recount the details of the killing. And they were able to confirm that the men's remains were burned, not eaten. Because in Yali tradition, it was prohibited to cannibalize someone who had not previously cannibalized one of your own. It would have been wrong. I don't know how to respond to that. Well... Over time, churches were planted and Bible translation was begun. And several years ago, Faith Comes by Hearing recorded a Yali New Testament. And then when it came time to deliver the proclaimers, our national director took one of those small bush planes into this really, really remote location. And he didn't have very much time on the ground. And so people gathered around. They walked hours and days to come and, and hear this audio Bible. And, and when Chandra turned it on, 
it was silent and, and people were listening. And after a few minutes, there was one woman in particular who was kind of squatted on the ground. And she just leapt to her feet three times. She leapt to her feet and she exclaimed, this God is not a foreign God. This God is my God because he speaks my language. And then she lifted her hands to the heavens and drew them back close to her heart as though to indicate that God had come to dwell among them by giving them his word on an audio Bible on a proclaim. What a what a beautiful story of God's grace and faithfulness, and to have such a wonderful response to God's Word. Yes, and it's the response that I really want to focus on, because that kind of a response is not uncommon. Over the years, Faith Comes by Hearing has recorded about 30 languages in just Papua, Indonesia, and um, one of the ones that we're celebrating this month is a language by the name of Wambon. It's a new New Testament translation. And I have a report from the Bible translator from when they dedicated their print Bible back in August of last year. And it's really amazing because what they did is they built a smartphone app and they put some text on there, but they also put um, a snippet of a Luke video. And so they plugged that smartphone into a projector in this hall where everyone was gathered. And the way he describes it is there was like this collective wow that just filled the room. And then the people kind of approached the podium because they wanted to see and they wanted to hear um, their, the, the scriptures in their, in their own mother tongue. And I'll just read you what he, what he wrote. This was a transformative moment for many, especially for those who struggled with literacy. The ability to listen to the scriptures in their native tongue was not just a convenience, but a profound emotional experience. The joy and excitement were palpable as they applauded and praised, deeply moved by the realization that they could now hear the words in a way that resonated with their souls. And this month, Aaron, it's not just the Wambone people, but all of the languages that we've heard this month. They're hearing the word in a way that can resonate with their souls. God's word is powerful. Yes, it is. And I think it's a good time for us to listen to the remainder of our languages, including the Wambone. Pedro, así Juan, o contare poco sabe cómo ir a sope. Nienga tú. Ara me tenta si que será. Echele gueni y bejma bo. E bokeni ki. O pam heri. E wehema. E gueni ria. Inhalut kayangora angana manbunga. Wambon. Jordano ogbire. Ngwa ogbire onden. Ale moni le bo abase zurden. Wenye. Wu hime olo vala diba on. Sotana vala. Praise God for these languages and these people who have God's word in audio. Now, I mentioned earlier that we are building towards 2,000 languages, mm -hmm. but Lori, how close are we? Well, are you gonna do the drum roll? Okay, drum roll. Faith Comes by Hearing now provides scripture recordings in 18 new languages, bringing us to a total of 1,978 languages. Additionally, Faith Comes by Hearing adapted gospel films in 17 new languages this month, bringing the total to 1,417. And now, let's watch a portion of the gospel film in the Urat language from Papua New Guinea. <laughs> Yala yini mekina, lamburenge, prepwa nal ngaye na ot. Ngam ye pekaye pe, ngam hi en ngaye. Lori, would you like to close us out in prayer? I sure would. Father God, I want to thank you that you are guiding us and resourcing us daily in this mission that you have given us. And Lord, I especially want to pray for the languages that we have released this month. Lord, that uh, those who hear it will be transformed and they will come to know you. And Lord, as we continue on this journey to Vision 2033, I pray, Lord, 
that we would just keep our eyes on you and trust that you are providing and that you are guiding every step of the way. And I just pray this to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us for this installment of the update. We look forward to seeing you next month where we'll continue to see God work throughout the nations. Thank you.